Hey, Simon here, and today I want to talk about flow maps so that we create uh, out of this static uh, Photoshop standard cloud texture and in combination with a little flow map, create something like this so that we have this cool twirly motion. And I would like to talk about how to import the textures because there are some um, things you should um, uh, note there and uh, also setting up the material. So let me get prepared here. And first we have to create uh, the flow map, right? So there's a flow map painter actually, which is really cool. You can just put uh, or a paint uh, flow map here. It's even tileable. And the only thing you have to do now is uh, check this flip red. You can do it in the material later. I will uh, explain it too, but you, yeah, it's better if you just check this. Uh, define a path and a file name and then bake to texture and then we are ready to go. And I prepared a material here where we have the flow map and this little um, uh, noise pattern and then yeah, everything else will be uh, now done on the fly. So the first uh, what we do is we mask out uh, the first two channels R and G um, yeah, because we only need a two dimensional vector and not three dimensional and our uh, flow map is only 2D anyway. And then we can multiply this by a value just to, to have a certain um, strength regulation so that it's not super strong. And then we add this to uh, texture coordinates, to the standard texture coordinates, like so. So we add this, it's a bit slow right now. I don't know what's happening here, but Let's just ignore that. Okay, and now we already have our texture distorted. So that's pretty nice. Um, something I have to mention here is that it is wrongly distorted. And this is because the values we get in here, because it's just a standard texture, um, are going from zero to one. But vectors can go from minus one to plus one. They can also show into or point into the, uh, the negative directions. So what we can do here is a constant uh, bias scale, which basically does two things. First, it um, subtracts a value. In our case, it shall be minus 0 0.5. And with that, we, we move all our values here coming from 0 uh, to 1 are now minus, uh, going from minus uh, 0 0.5 to plus 0 0.5. And the scale is basically a multiplication by 2. And uh, uh, this uh, scales the, um, the values from minus uh, 0.5 to plus 0.5 to minus 1 to plus 1. So now we created out of these values, out of these values coming from the texture, um, vector data we can actually use. And as you can see, when we don't do this, um, there is something happening, but it's wrong. And only here with our modification, it looks perfectly right. One note about the texture. When you import it, you have to set this to um, vector displacement so that it is not compressed. If you uh, use compression, you will modify the uh, vector data and we won't want this. I um, uh, will show later how this looks. Uh, and also, one second, another option is just to use um, a normal map. If you import this texture as normal map, then this constant bias scale is automatically done for you. So again, we can just mask our values. And when we look here, it should look pretty much exactly the same, uh, independent of which version we use. Just a word about um, the red channel. Uh, if we didn't check this here, right, we can just add here a little multiply um, like so and a two dimensional constant and then we can just put in here minus one and here one and so this is the flip for the x or for the red channel so you could do it but uh, yeah in our case we don't need it i will let it stay for demonstration purposes later but yeah we don't need this okay cool so but now we want to have an animation right and for that we use a time uh, multiply it with a value to make it a little bit slower maybe uh, so that four, and when we debug the value here, we will see that uh, this is kind of big values, and we don't want these big values. What we want to use is a frag, which basically 
uh, makes that whenever the time reaches um, to one, it restarts at zero. So it goes from zero to one, zero to one, zero to one, and so on. And this we multiply with our flow map, which is basically that we scale the flow map strength. We start at the beginning and more and more our, um, our noise pattern is distorted. At the end, because of the jump here and the frag, uh, yeah, it will flip back. This is ugly and we uh, have to do something against this. But um, yeah, basically we just fade in the, um, the intensity of the flow map. And to yeah, work uh, around this issue with the plopping here, we do a phase separation basically. So this is phase one of our flow map thing. And we do the same again, but offset it by 0 0.5, which is basically, it's the same, but we go a little bit forward in time basically. So we do a frag then afterwards. So it's, it's the same like, like above. Um, and we copy the whole thing here and multiply this with our flow map as before. And so now we have two, two times the same um, function, but offset it in time. And now we have to go back and forth between these. And we do this with a lerp. So one uh, input is this and one is this. And um, this lerp will, will um, make it possible to uh, fade between this phase and this phase. And now we have, a co we have to um, define how and when we want to fade between this phase and this phase, right? So we can use just this here and add a constant bias scale again. Again, same values, minus 5 and uh, minus 0 0.5 and uh, 2. And then an absolute value, an absolute node. And what this is, doing basically here we have um, a transition from black to white and then it flips back okay we offset this a little bit with that guy and but but still the same behavior and the absolute node is giving us that we go back and forth between uh, black then to white and then to black again and there is no flip now we have a smooth transition between black and white and what happening or what we want is basically when um, let's say this is our color values in the texture so um, this is this is our our not the color values this is the the flow map strength yeah and it starts over and over again and we want don't want to see this flip here right this we don't want to see. So what we just created is basically a fade in, fade out functionality so that um, when, when here we start, we fade in and then we fade out again. So at this point when the flip would happen, we fade this phase out and yeah, so that we don't see the flip. And at this point, um, the other phase, let's see, like this, would then be uh, faded in. Uh, I hope this explains it. But you will see that it works when we connect the, the lerp here. Now we see no uh, flip anymore. And if you look closely, you will see that there is, yeah, the, you, you see the fade in and fade out. It gets a little bit obvious or more obvious when we uh, let it run faster. Then you get these pulses, yeah, pulsating pattern here. And this is not super beautiful. And therefore, we can do something. We can just use a noise texture and add this here so we offset again the time but this time we not offsetting uh, we don't offset uh, like here right um, for all the pixels with the same offset amount with by using a texture we offset um, the the time depending on the area basically so here it's a different offset than here and so on because of the different color values in the noise texture uh yeah and that's it we we can play a little bit around by uh by multiplying with a value to having it not super or as strong as here but the basically the basic principle is already done we can um, make it a little bit slower again 
like so. And yeah, this works already pretty fine, I would say. Now a word about uh, the compression stuff, okay? So I prepared here, this is a compressed texture. And when we zoom in, we can see this here. Everything looks kind of okay. And when I connect this here, then we see these artifacts. So this is a standard, if you import this texture, the standard uh, settings will be this. And to have it uncompressed, you just set this instead of dxt1 here, this will be the standard, you set it to vertex displacement. Um, and you can actually go really small with this texture. So here's our flow map. And I will change the size now. So it's um, 1024 right now, it's the original resolution. But we can go really small with that. We can even go to 16 and it still holds up. This is really, really amazing, actually, how small these um, textures can be if they are uh, yeah, uncompressed, uh, because uh, yeah, you don't need more information here. It's really, really, works really, really well. Um, yeah, or you can uh, yeah, just use the normal map, then you don't have to care about the compression at all, because it's autom automatically uh, made for you. And by the way, if you don't um, flip the red channel, we can simulate this here. I will flip it now, but it was originally correct, right? Then the flow will change, the direction will change. Actually, this is quite intense, to be honest. I didn't expect this. Maybe I have to do it after the um, constant bias scale. Oh yeah, this looks better. Does it? I hope it does. Let's see if I don't connect this. Yeah, um, now it flows into the different direction. Okay, so this was the problem. You have to do it after the, the uh, normal modification. And um, uh, yeah, as you can see here, uh, now it flows into like down here and then up again. And when we flip the red channel, then it flows uh, yeah, up here and down here. So um, yeah, you don't destroy the um, the original data, but uh, it flows into a different direction. So that's what happens when you don't check this here, then you have to correct this like so in the material. Okay, um, I think this is everything I would like to show. Just to recap, we just learned the basic principle of uh, how to create a material, how um, the phasing works so that we have to have two phases and blend in between them. Uh, we learned about the uh, compression and how to make uh, real normal data out of a standard texture or use um, a normal map right uh, from the start. Um, uh, how to uh, invert the, um, the texture channel. And yeah, I would say that's, um, that's already enough. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.